Hey everybody, welcome. It's Andrew Ainsworth here. Thanks for tuning in, watching the video today. I've got the new Ping I525 iron to hit, review, and tell you all about. Stay tuned. So, the Ping I525 iron, hotly anticipated, much needed for the Ping range at the moment. Do you remember the I500 iron from um, last year, which was absolutely amazing. It was this hollow headed, forged face sort of welded onto. It was incredible performance. This is the next generation really of the i500 range. Very, very similar in design, but there are some features which I just want to talk to you a little bit about. i500 for me was an incredibly surprising golf club to fit with because it had a very small, compact looking head. And when I gave it to people to say, have a little hit with that, they were very surprised just how easy it was to hit. It was long, the ball speeds off the club face were great, and it was super forgiving. So I sold that club to people who probably came in to fit for G410 or G425, and just loved the look of the i500 and walked out buying that one without really any lack of performance. I think you did need to be a reasonable good ball striker to get the most out of i500. You know, if you were struggling to find the face, catching a lot of heel strikes, toe strikes, then there was a limit as to how much it would help and you probably better off with a 410 or a 425. But if you're the sort of player who's pretty good ball striker, likes the idea of a more compact head, um, a forged face to give you that soft feel potentially, then the i525 definitely might be worth looking at. I've got the screen up from the website here on in front of us. Let's just have a little look at some tags here. Oh, we'll go back and just talk about the, the first few taglines. Powerful new design, engineered with a forged mirage in steel face, increasing ball speed and distance. Packaged in a compact player style, model perimeter weighted to elevate forgiveness and deliver long towering shots. Well, we'll find out about that in a minute. Let's just scroll down and have a just a very quick look at some of the the tech that's going on. I won't bore you too much because if you're really into this, you can go and look yourself, can't you? But here's the Forge Marage in steel face, welded on, not just like welded on as you like might do to in a car. It's it's this special process where you can't actually, it's seamless, the weld, you can't see it is there, but it's actually welded onto this body, this 17.4 stainless steel body why are they doing this to increase flexing to launch shots faster more ball speed basically pleasing sound polymer is precisely injected onto the inside of the face to improve feel and sound preferred styling compact profile we've talked about the hydropull 2.0 finish is being put onto all the pings new clubs at the moment wedges and everything else it basically repels water to ensure predictable, consistent performances um, from wet and dry conditions. And there was a review done, I think it was on, I can't remember what channel it was on. It was one of the um, sort of research channels where they looked at the sprayed water onto wedges and then tested them to see what the performance was. And the Ping Hydra Pearl came out tops. So it disperses the water better. Micromax grooves, precision mill grooves pattern allows for tighter spacing and geometry and they've, they've put these, put extra grooves in basically tighter together. Tungsten, a lot of um, customers always ask me about what's going on here in the toe, this, this weight which they've put in the toe here. So the tungsten toe and shaft tip weight combine with a tiered dynamic face structure. I think from my understanding, when they put the tungsten toe weights in, it draws the sweet spot further out towards the toe. So more forgiving if you are prone to a few toe strikes. I think that's the idea. There's probably more to it than that. Um, stock shafts are the Project XIO steel shaft. That's their stock shaft, easy to load, lightweight, delivering medium trajectory and spin. But there are also lots of other shaft options available. If I can just quickly jump onto those so shafts available the project x which we just talked about recoil which is their graphite the good old awt which is made by nippon dynamic golds in 105 and 120 
graphite available in regular stiff um, kbs tour pro modus and the very lightweight elevate um, grips are standard tour velvet <laughs> i really i quite like ping's um almost simplistic view to grips yeah we just fit two of velvets anything else you want on there you pay extra for it keeps it nice and simple lot six different grip sizes they will offer a velvet cord as well but certainly over here in the uk there is a there's an upcharge if you want the two of velvet cord fitted so a lot of people say what grips can i have on there you know can i have multi compounds or mcc plus fours i'm like well no really it's just a two of velvet um, and if you want an upgrade, you're going to have to pay for it. So keeps life simple, doesn't it? I think there's almost too many choices so, in grips sometimes. So we're going to hit this i525 forged. I've got a 7 iron here. I've got a red dot. I have fitted into this the KBS shaft because I quite like that. Um, and I don't have the i10 at the moment. I've only got it in a 5.5. And ideally, I'd need a 6-point knot in that. So that's why I've chosen this shaft, standard length. Let's get onto the simulator and hit some shots, see how it feels, see how it performs. Okay, everybody, time to hit a few shots with this lovely new i525 iron. Where am I? I'm on a fantasy course, Blue Bayou. Bayou, Bayou, um, excuse the pronunciation, 166 yards to the green. I've gone with my new favorite ball of the week, which is the TaylorMade TP5. I've never really messed around much with these. I'm not too keen on all the patterns on them, but it's a great ball, spins well. I didn't tell you about the loft previously, 30.5 degrees on the seven iron, 45 degrees on the pitching wedge. So I'm so glad we're not super cranked here. Standard length, um, red dot. So one degree flat, which is my lie. Let's get in there and have a little hit. Before I hit the first shot, let me just give you a little overhead of what I'm seeing. Very squat, compact looking club, thin top edge, blade-like appearance. Beautiful, what's not to like? Here we go, shot number one. I haven't really hit many balls today, so no idea where this is going. Oh, I think that might find the green. Pretty good start. Not bad. I did hit four warm-up shots, so that's my fifth shot of the day, which I'm pretty pleased with. Let's give you some numbers. 85 miles an hour club speed, 114 ball speed, launching at about 19, spinning at 5.6. I don't generate a huge amount of backspin with my irons, so but 5.6. Did you see the way the ball stopped? The greens are set to soft, but that's enough spin to stop it. 162 carry. That'll do me for a 7 iron. Absolutely great. Feel. Now we, we come back. Here's the debate. Let's, let's have a good debate about this. Forged head against non-forged, cast stainless steel. What's the advantage of a forged head? Is it just feel? Is it just that it feels softer coming off the club face? Or do you think there's any other advantage to making a club a forged face? Remember, this is not a completely forged head, just the bit you're hitting it with. Post your comments down below. Forged or cast, does it make any difference? Let's hit another one. Might go a fraction left, but strike was good. Put a little bit more on that one, it felt like. A little bit faster. Yeah, I went to 88 miles now, but the ball speed stayed the same. Remember the ball speed can sort of control by your strike location, you know, if you really middle one of these, but there's not much in it there, is there? 114 miles an hour ball speed, slightly lower launch, spinning at 5.6 again. 161 yards of carry, uh, finished 18 feet away from the flag so uh, happy days just in three putt range for me that one let's go again not such a good strike that one go on clear that bunker oh go on fishing that is in the agua folks what happened there just just a bad swing really <laughs> I think we'll just leave it at that. Let's go one more. 
Oh, that was good. That's probably the best strike out of the four that I've hit. That felt middle for diddle, that did. Club speed up at 85. We're getting some similar numbers here, aren't we? Uh, spinning at 140, sorry, ball speed 114, spinning just over 5.2, 165 carry. So if we just, I should hit more shots really than that, but just to give you a little flavor of the numbers, average ball speed, 113, average launch, 18, average backspin, 5.7, Average carry distance 161 with a peak height of around about 30 yards, 90 feet. Um, average from the 10 foot, 18 to the there. So average 10 foot away. Not bad for a hacker, is it? So what do we think of this club? I think it's a great addition to the range. Just what we needed to fill that gap between the G425 and the I-59. There was a big gap there. It's just as good as the i500 was is it any better than the i500 <laughs> um i think cosmetically probably looks a little bit better i think performance wise very very similar but you know as i say in a lot of my videos golf manufacturers they can't reinvent the wheel can they there's only so much they can do to a golf club but it's lovely the other sort of player decent ball striker likes the look of a bladed compact club but you want some forgiveness with some ball speed coming off there, then this is definitely worth a look. Price-wise, not 100% where these are going to settle in the UK at the moment, but I think we're going to be somewhere around about 1100 to 1200 pounds. I think that's the ball. I'll maybe, I'll do a bit of research when I'm editing the video and I'll put up some pictures up here around me of what some of the onliners are selling it at. And uh, that would be for a seven iron set. It's generally how we sell clubs over here in the UK. But obviously you can get what you want. But when you see prices, it's generally priced on a seven iron set. So I'm hugely impressed. I love the club. Um, I think we're going to be selling a few sets of these through the 2022 season. Thanks for watching the video today. If you're new to the channel, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you think the video is any good and I haven't wasted your time, give it a thumbs up. Great. See you soon. Bye for now.